ગુજરાતી મીડિયા ડોટ કોમ સાથે આજે છે અપર્ણા પોપટ બેડમિન્ટનની દુનિયામાં એક ચેમ્પિયન થવું અને એ પણ નવ વાર એ કોઈ નાની અવસ્થી વાત નથી આપણે વાત કરીએ એમની સાથે એમની લાઈફ વિશે એમની ફેન્ટાસ્ટિક મેચીસ વિશે બિંગ અ વુમન બિંગ અ ચેમ્પિયન આઈ આઈ નો દેટ ધીસ માઇટ બી અ વેરી ક્લિશિયેટ ક્વેશ્ચન હાઉ વર યુ પરસીવ્ડ બાય પીપલ અરાઉન્ડ યુ આઈ મીન આઈ એમ શ્યોર યુર ફેમિલી સપોર્ટેડ યુ એન્ડ દેટ્સ વાય યુ આર વે યુ આર ટુડે બટ આઈ ઓલવેઝ બિલીવ દેટ એની વન હુ હેઝ મેડ ઇટ દેર શુડ થિંક દેમ સેલ્ફ ફર્સ્ટ no i think if you think that becoming a champion is an individual effort absolutely not um it's a team effort uh, completely i come from a traditional gujarati family um and nobody in my family had a sporting background so uh, to pursue something like sport i think i was a child i was just allowed to play sport but i think a lot of the credit goes to my parents because they really had to manage family and society and uh, things like that so um, and also when you pursue elite sport there's a lot that goes into it i think parents primarily take a big brunt whether it's financially whether it's allowing me to leave home at the age of 16 to train in bangalore um, so i think a lot of credit goes to them and of course to the coaches uh, who actually handled uh, me very well being a very young child i started winning very early yeah. so it was very important for them to handle me Uh, as a player and i think i was nurtured very well so i think a lot of credit goes to everyone else wow which were the things that you remember very vividly when you think of your years of training which were maybe very difficult at that point of time for you because you were very young and later pachi you the kya to karvano jo hai na because when once you grow up when you learn when you understand it's a different thing but at that point of time those things were difficult for you no i think absolutely uh, you know when i left home it was this whole thing that i wanted to play badminton and i wanted to play very well and i got a chance to train under the legendary prakash padukone so it was a dream come true for me um but i think when you actually move out of home a lot of things are different and you appreciate things much more um being in bombay uh, in the mornings i would be wake, woken up by my mother you know get up go to school go for training <laughs> whatever it is uh, as soon as i landed in bangalore i started waking up with an alarm clock right which was <laughs> different i think also hot food getting hot food yeah. when you want uh, i used to eat my lunch and dinner out of a dabba which was so big um, so you know things like you know taking the chapati and breaking it with two hands is not something we were used to doing at home there's small things but they remind you of home and uh, much later on you realize that these are the small things that were there but you didn't pay as much attention to it because you had a larger goal in mind which was to play for the country yeah. um you know and in the end i'm really happy that i could achieve that goal you know playing two olympic games i think is an absolute dream come true let's let's talk of olympics i mean i remember as a kid we we were like you know amused to see all the inauguration ma japan uh, you know all the great visuals that we see and then becoming a journalist writing about it uh, you know talking about it you know what changes you have seen because you have been a part of the system in a way how things have changed uh, especially when we talk of you know sports from uh, you know perspective of being an indian uh, i think it's changed tremendously right from the mindset that we had uh, way back at that point in time and uh, speaking of the olympics in particular I think qualifying for the Olympics at that point was extremely difficult okay. because um the funding was not enough uh, the backing was not I've traveled around the world for tournaments alone no coach um you know the equipment that was given you know, the courts that we played on used to be torn and you know they were difficult to manage um but having said that there were challenges but we still did you know 100% well, to yeah. to do what we did um have things improved now i mean 100% they've gotten so much better um but i think we still really need to catch up when it comes to the olympic medals so we want more medals we are hungrier for more and we know india can do much better um so we're just hoping that this streak continues and the belief in the players stays intact and uh, you know the government and with all the other stakeholders be it and they've been very very supportive to the players so we are really proud to be a part of the sports fraternity in india at this point in time you just said that uh, you know the, the conditions were not really good uh, 
why was it uh, does this mean that uh, sports per se was ignored or we didn't take ourselves very seriously that we as as indians can really do well when it comes to sports ma pachu gujaratiyo mate dal bhatiya gujaratiyo shu karvana hata they they can't imagine one slap from you will make the other person faint for two hours i'm sure no, no, i just just because you said dal bhat i think one of the um, they say sacrifice but i don't know i was a vegetarian till i was 14 I had to start eating non-veg, so that was another thing that wow. I had to do <laughs> because of travel. I think it's just easier to get non-veg to food. You have to adjust. You, yeah, you have to adjust. It was a combination of belief and mindset as well as money. I think funding plays a very large role uh, when it comes to resources. So um, we we were good, but we weren't prepared enough. We were just not prepared to play the bigger tournaments against um, more fierce opponents. um and if you prepare well the belief comes and that is that is how i That's look at it um so we our preparation wasn't as it should have been um because of the challenges that we had but i think the the talent was always there and um, if we had the resources uh, i'm very sure we would have done better you've learned from the prakash padukone um uh, which are the three things that you remember you know as his student you know which he must have you know he, he might have said them casually uh, but it you know those things uh, they, they they stayed with you a guru mantra you know something like a mantra that that stuck to you and any three things that you learned from him maybe by listening or by you know just observing him yeah um i think he is really a man of few words so a lot of what i picked up from him was through observation uh, i think his focus for sure uh, his tremendous discipline and uh, yeah the one thing that he used to always mention to us is that you are accountable for your own performance um i will correct you once i will tell you once but i will not repeat it a second time so every time you know he used to say something to us it used to be like the gospel truth like he said it now <laughs> you know you you can't ever forget it because if you do then you know you're going to lose out on that learning so I think yeah, these are the things that. And you know, in in India, in the Guru Shishya Parampara, it is always said that uh, Guru gets angry on the student uh, from whom he is expecting or she is expecting the most. Any any such story you can share that happened uh, with you with your Guru? Uh, I had actually three coaches through my career, and I think all three of them at some point in time have got angry with me. Um, also because I was a very curious uh, kid. Uh, i would keep asking questions when i was training uh, if they said this is how you have to do something and i'd ask why until i was satisfied i would keep at it so sometimes yeah that could be a little frustrating for them but i think all in all um, it was a great trait to have because I, the understanding i got about the sport was much deeper uh, because of that curiosity so um, yeah and i think the second thing coaches i think would be upset with me was my uh, eating habits Uh, i would eat very little food not the wrong food but just too little um, so i think that's a complaint they had yeah so which are the the new generation badminton players that you look up to and you feel are very promising and what do you want for us india to you know to when it comes to the field of badminton look i want them to win the olympic gold that's yes. that's that's, that's that. like like that's the ultimate right i think there's a whole bunch of them who are doing extremely well uh, in the past couple of years we've got some brilliant results that um, honestly that we never even thought would be possible uh, we've had world number ones in badminton we've had a uh, world champions in badminton so i think it, all in all the sport is doing extremely well i think one of the best in india thank you it was lovely talking to you thanks a thank lot you. my pleasure subscribe karo gujarati midday बेल आइकॉन पर क्लिक करीने मेड़वो तमाम वीडियो ना डायरेक्ट नोटिफिकेशन